right. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the one within all. It is another time for an Interverse live stream. Especially exciting because we're talking about one of my favorite things in the world, which is a music festival, and one of my favorite music festivals of music festivals, Backwoods. So if you're joining the stream or checking this out after the fact, not live, do us a favor and share it. We'd really love to get more word out about this awesome festival and about some of the things I'm going to be talking to Jay Means today about, which would be exploring the esoteric, as you might see in this title. One of my favorite things, if you're familiar with the show, is to go deep into the various rabbit holes of metaphysics and esoterica. So really excited to be getting introduced to Jay here, and I hope you guys enjoy. I've got him on the line already, and say what's up, man. What's up? What's up? What's up? Aloha. One of my favorite things to say. So you're into the esoteric, then you're aware that words have power. So that's why I actually prefer aloha over hell low. <laughs> right, right. So, man, tell us a little bit about yourself before we kick into gear on discussing your material for this upcoming workshop. Um. Well, I'm I'm Jay Means. Uh. I'm a brewer by trade. I've been doing that for about four and a half years and I'm also a writer. Um, this will be my second festival while I'll be teaching workshops. The first time was at Flux Fest. I love Flux Fest as well. Um, yeah, I've been, I've been into this uh, probably roughly 10 years now, but more in depth on actually finding sources and finding things that I could prove over the last three years. And this has been all coming together for me. And this is beautiful for me to have a chance to be able to share it with people. So what do you think the value is of studying, I guess, the occult? It would be a good way of phrasing it. Things that are hidden from our normal experience. I think it's important because we need to know who we are. And a cult has such a, a negative context to it. Is so bad and nobody really understands that it means just hidden, you know, it's the hidden things. And I think it's time for those things to become um, unveiled. I think we need to know about ourselves. We need to know about our history and we need to get down to the, the nitty gritty of who we are as a people. And and maybe that'll help us knock down some of the barriers that have been built up for us. Man, that's so well said. You basically put it in the perfect nutshell, which is that the more that we know ourselves, the more that we realize that we actually all come from the same source and we are literally one. So that's the first way to break, to uh, get past the division and reconnect and repair all the trauma and the damage that's gone on, both in the individual and the collective, is to find out the roots of who, what we are, where we came from, so that we know where we're going. I think that is definitely well said. Thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just the, the building blocks, you know, we gotta get down to the, the building blocks so we can see how we got here. I think once we figure out how we got to this point, then we can, you know, start reversing it and, you know, evolve past that. So, uh, Backwoods, uh, when, when's your workshop gonna be at Backwoods and what are some of the things people can expect to be able to talk to you about there? Um, my workshops are going to be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I believe they're all at six o'clock. They'll run for about an hour. Um, the first night I'm going to focus on initiation rites of ancient priesthoods. I'm going to really dial in on the Egyptians. I'll dig into a little bit of the rites of Eleusis. I'll dig into a little bit about the Druids and tie that into also the Native American. Very cool. I also see a lot of connection between all of those uh, wisdom traditions <laughs> when you get oh, talking yeah. about going to the roots and seeing how everything is one. That will definitely teach you quick if you start exploring the the uh, initiation rites that you're talking about. I find that to be a pretty cool topic. I've had, I don't know if you're familiar with the researcher Ross Ben. He's an sort of a cult historian, mostly focused on stuff around the Philadelphia area, but he does a lot of talking about things like what went on in Kemet as Egypt was actually known right. as. So when it comes to 
initiation rites, we kind of have lost that and we have to do that for ourselves these days. And I think it's so cool to be talking about that at a festival because one of the things that a lot of people end up encountering at festivals tends to be mind expanding, cautious expanding experiences of some form right. or another. And that's actually right. what the initiations were about. And how, do you see this as a connection to the old, the old rite of passage in a new time? Oh, a hundred percent. I think um, this generation, especially we are, you know, forcing ourselves to be initiated. Whereas back then, you know, you had to be selected and now we're kind of self-selecting ourselves. You know, if you, if you choose to want to dig deeper, if you choose to want to know more about yourself, then the information is there. Whereas back then, you know, you had to be selected to even hear snippets of it. We can just go on our cell phones and start digging and, you know, start reading the books of the people that's written them. So we have it all at our fingertips now. So I think that's a beautiful thing about it. And at festivals, it's such an open and open-minded space that you can, anything you want to learn about, if you meet the right person, it is there for you to, to dig into. And not only that, but there seems to be a lot of synchronicity that comes out at festivals where you actually, not only is the right person to talk to you there that has just the most interesting conversation for you tailored specifically, but you'll also run into them most likely in an almost magical way in my experience. Right. Same here. Same here. That's what made me love festivals so much. And that's what really opened my mind up to want to even start sharing this information. It's like, where do you share it? Well, festivals is the best place to do it because I believe the people that come to festivals are the modern day medicine men and women that are going out and healing the world. Yeah, a lot of the people that show up also end up getting their healing there and then realizing that they want to bring that to the world. I mean, I, I for one, definitely had my imagination totally shift into gear after my first festival at Mulberry Mountain, just like Backwoods is going to be. It was Wakarusa, of course. I've made plenty of comments about that in the past, but do you think that there is an actual mechanism that we could point to, like our sort of our chakras harmonizing with each other and creating a, a, a group field, if you will, like a, a miniature new sphere when you're at the event? Because I'm, I'm not kidding when I say that the most crazy synchronicities will occur that you, and then after the, after the festival is over, you won't even remember half of them because there's so many. Right. I, I believe living through the heart, you know, I, I believe when, you know, you live through your heart, your heart is your gold. Um, when you're on that frequency of love, then it's easy for one to connect to. I believe that if you if you really try to see things through your heart, you can be open minded. You connect easily with people and you don't have the ego kind of blocking your way from, you know, trying to see someone else's point of view. And I, I think that's what really drove me to festivals, because you'll meet people from all walks of life and it's almost like their guards down. So, you know, everyone's hearts open. No one's trying to hurt anyone. It's just a beautiful time. So, yeah, you know, if you if you focus on just just really breathing through your heart, what your heart tells you, um, trusting your intuition, you, you know, the 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 limits are is limitless. It's limitless. And if you're funning, like if you're really in the fun, that enthusiasm that is automatic when you're having fun actually charges up the magic. And I think this is one of the biggest teachers about the festival experience that we need to bring out to the world, because most of the time we're working, which actually. Right phonetically you can just kind of change vowels out and if you have the same consonants it means the same thing generally and so war working warking it's like war <laughs> it's a it's literally like a form of warfare against yourself when you put yourself into the position of work that is not fun that you have no enthusiasm for so right. that actually is what blocks your magic and your manifestation power and the synchronicities like dry up and we're supposed to actually be aware that when the synchronicities are stopping, that uh, that is a sign that we need to change direction. But we've totally, right. we've been so disconnected from synchronicity, culturally speaking, that many people, when they start to experience it, they think they're going insane. Yeah, I think that happens a lot. Um, I when, at, when I was a little younger, I made the decision that if I didn't like my job, I was going to leave it. And through that, leading up to now and be, becoming a brewer, it's been beautiful because not only am I learning about alchemy, but then I'm an alchemist by trade. So I'm able to, to work with that love and create an environment where everyone that I'm involved with at work, you know, they, they enjoy what they do. So it's not work anymore. You know, we're having fun. We're, we're spending time together. So it's more of a, 
of a relationship between one another and we get a chance to see each other. And it's, it's, it's a lot better that way. You know, I wish more people had the, the opportunity to do what they loved or at least find out what they loved and then strive to go do that. It can seem very inconceivable when you're in the point of not even knowing what you like. So all the more recent festivals are just a beautiful thing because you can learn what you like. <laughs> I would never have realized right. I was so in to creating art. I actually even repressed the creation excitement that I used to have as a kid with and replaced it with, uh, I'm not good at it, so it's not who I am. <laughs> and something about getting around all these creative people and all the the color and the differentness of festivals definitely reminded me, oh yeah, you used to have fun with this. It used to not matter what it looked like. You just did what you wanted. And the right. biggest lesson maybe right there that I've ever learned potentially. Well, and that's the beauty of the dancing at the festival too, because, you know, you get to let loose and it doesn't, nobody can't dance. Everyone can dance. It's just, you got to go out there and, and try something, let loose and do what feels right. And that's the the other aspect of festivals that I love. Not only can you get all the workshops and the classes and learn about yoga and meditation and and get some insight about symbolism and ancient religions, but you also get to dance as a party. So it's you know two sides of it, two sides of a coin, and is it, they come together and blend so beautifully too. Yes, th yes they do. The dance is actually a big form of medicine in and of itself. And it, getting past the barriers that you have if you have barriers to dancing in front of other people is something that is actually going to level you up spiritually i would say yeah i, I agree 100 percent. i'm a big dancer me and my family we 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 throw these big dance parties and we just love to have a good time and, and it's amazing to me how when everyone the party first starts you know we're kind of trying to do small talk and this and that as soon as the music starts and the dance floor opens up and everyone gets to having a good time, all the barriers come down. Now we're all best friends and it's just the most fun time I've ever had. Absolutely. The neighbors on the dance floor are like instant friends at a music festival in a way that doesn't really quite match going to usually a, a concert or to see music outside of the festival environment. I really do, like I was kind of hinting at earlier, perceive that there is an interconnectivity from so many people living in the heart space that creates the that, that actually does like dissolve the other barriers that we would normally have in social situations it's like that part of your brain that is trying to constantly warn you about how you look can i can go right. away for a while <laughs> right and, and you know that's what's i think that's what's important to me um why i want to teach these classes so much because a lot of the initiations of the past were all about the destruction of the ego and the purity of the soul um, like you was making the, you was talking about Kim earlier, like uh, one of my classes on alchemy. Um, Al Kim actually means, Al means God. Kemet is ancient Egypt and also representation of the black earth, but is binding the black earth to God, binding your physical body to God and the soul. And when you have a chance to, to let loose like that and destroy the ego, you can let free and you can dance and no one is judging you. You, it, you you just feel like a you feel like a better person and when you leave there you live your life like you're a better person also exactly and there's a difference in alchemy especially since we're on the subject of spiritual alchemy there's definitely a difference between true blackness versus like darkness or distortion or what you call evil and then we a lot of our language has totally mixed us up on these points and gotten us to confuse and conflate concepts but what we're talking about with true darkness or true black is actually the stage of nescience so it's not ignorance it's not like you had the ability to know better and you chose to remain ignorant the true black is like nescience where you are just sort of wild and you're doing things and laughing about it and not realizing the effect of that on other people right. and so that we're all in that level of nescience somewhere or another. And that's okay. That's part of what we're here to transmute as alchemists of our own life. And we right. bring that up the ladder of colors until it goes from black to clear and we're seeing clearly. <laughs> right, right. But the, uh, the distorted blackness is that sort of ego, ego that uh, wants to ignore and not care, even though that it has had the opportunity to learn and know better. 
Right. And, and, you know, that's what we're talking about when you when you look to your heart. I think that's why it's so important, um, because when you can destroy when you can put aside your ego for a second and you can care for someone, and you can have compassion and you, you know the true meaning of love because you care about that person just as much as yourself. Then a lot of those a lot of the material things that used to matter, they don't matter anymore. How much is in your bank account doesn't matter anymore. What matters is that you are happy and you want to do everything you can to make sure that this person feels loved and they're happy also. Man, that's so well said. And that actually even is achieved by being able to have that sort of awareness of your own self that makes you able to love yourself in a way that's not hedonistic or destructively selfish, but like selfish in the way that a parent would do whatever it took to take care of their kid and make sure that they were the healthiest and happiest possible if they were responsible. And so you're like, that's right. the awakening is that you got to stop lying to yourself about a lot of things because you're the only one that's there to fill that role of like your own parent. And if you're not doing it, then good luck. <laughs> right. It's, 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 it's taking responsibility. You know, uh, I think throughout the ages and up to this point, we've always given our responsibility away to someone else, um, to different institutions, um, different societal norms, so to speak. And we never took responsibility for our own actions in our own lives, in our own hands, and as robbers of our power. And I, I think a lot of the times why people are so depressed and so like they feel like the world is on their shoulders and they can't do anything about it is because they never took the time to realize how powerful they are. And through that, if you want to realize how powerful you are, you have to take responsibility and, and care about what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? You you have to take that power in your own hands. You know, no one else can do it for you. And I think it's a it's a hard balance. Like you said, you can't lie to yourself. You can't lie to yourself and say, is this person's fault or it's because they did this to me. It's like, no, I see who I am today. I love myself and I want to change the things. I want to transmute the things I don't like about myself into something, something beautiful, something gold. And you can even get past the like and dislike at a certain level where you're just like, well, this isn't working, so I'm going to change it. And I, it's okay, but now it's time to change. That's where the, that's a, the real alchemist is almost just this neutrality generator <laughs> that stays right, right in the middle and knows when it's okay to, uh, w knows when the, the poison is at the right level where it's actually a medicine versus, right. so that's like, that, that, that takes a lot of work and self-reflection and and experimentation when it comes to almost anything that you want to incorporate into your life. But I think that when we're going back to talking about initiatory rites and say the Oracle at Delphi, there's this mm -hmm. classic phrase. I know that you know what I'm about to say. So what is, what is the most important thing on, on our journey that's written in stone above the, uh, the Oracle entrance? Oh, uh, no, I don't oh, know. Do you tell oh man. Okay. This is a class. It's a kind yeah. of a classic one that, uh, I was, it was just exactly what we're saying. Know thyself. <laughs> know thyself and you will know the universe and the gods is the more extended version. But it's all right. all inside. And I think it's pretty exciting that there's so many of us like coming online to realizing our true power and then helping others, reflecting it out to others. And I believe that this community that we're uh, f quickly going to be joining on the mountain at backwoods is the uh, that's the people who are either really hungry and ready to be filled with truth and not this not the the quote unquote real world the matrix world <laughs> that right. version of truth and also the people that are there to bring the higher levels of truth and and compassion especially the compassion i see so much care between people at, mm -hmm. at events like this more than more, definitely more than uh, a lack of care. Oh yeah, me too. Every time I go to a festival, I'm almost in tears when I have to leave because you feel that you feel like you're with family the whole time you're there. You feel taken care of. You feel you feel loved. You feel respected. You know you don't you don't feel judged. You feel like everyone around you, um, you know, wants to be around you, wants to care for you, wants you to be the best version of yourself that you can be. And it just, it makes it hard to leave. It really does. And I like how you said, um, some people come there hungry and some people come there bringing the truth. And, and that's, and that's so true. You know, some people do come there very hungry for the first time. Some people have no idea 
what they're getting themselves into. Someone might have just invited them. And it's, it's beautiful to me to see the, the mixture of people that have been in it for a long time and people that are just starting to, you know, swim out into the deep waters. I'm going to throw it out there just in case anyone that's tuning in wants to make a comment, but we'd love to hear from you, your thoughts on this in the chat here. And if we don't, no worries. We've got plenty we can talk about to uh, get this thing home. But it, this is about the tribe. This is about the community. So the, only, the whole reason Jay is bringing this to Backwoods as a workshop series is to answer your questions about what the hell is going on on planet Earth. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I, I, I don't want to... I guess while I'm there, I, I have the classes set up to where I'm not going to be talking the whole time where... I'll, I'll give a, a bid, um, go through the history, give a lot of the foundation, and then I want to hear from from them, from the people that's in the crowd, so I can just answer their questions and so they can get some clarity. Absolutely. It's just there's always something that somebody knows that nobody else really knows or has ever had the perspective about. Even someone that hasn't done deep study on things we're talking about. Uh, you might know, it could be anything. You might know more about putting a roof on a house than me, but that's not a small thing. Every little piece is what builds this this picture, this puzzle. Right. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping to learn just as much as I teach while I'm there. Yes. And that's actually where the real excitement is, is when you finally run into the person that's like, wait, wait, I, I'm, I'm shutting up. Please tell me because <laughs> mm-hmm. I like to talk a lot. I like to explain things, but I will be checking out your workshop and interested to see what I can learn and also I'll throw it out there that if you want to come by the Interverse live podcast it's in a workshop space but it's actually going to be a community get together where we sort of have a panel with whichever artists and other workshop presenters show up and then we'll also be just fielding conversation with the the audience that's there so I want it to feel like right. a big tribe powwow and talk about what oh, yeah. is most important to those who are there right then so it's going to be It's going to be pretty free form and also a lot of fun uh, with who is going to be showing up uh, that I already know about. So I'm excited. Yeah, I'll be there a hundred percent. I'll be there. Awesome, man. So uh, remind people again, what, where, you know, where they can find you if they want to have any chance to follow you before we actually get to backwoods or just to connect with you in any place. Um, You can find me on Facebook, uh, Jaquentin Means. You can also find me on Instagram at J-A-Q underscore M-E-A-N-S. Um, those are the best ways to find me. Very cool. Very cool. And guys, Backwoods is coming right up. It is May 31st through June 2nd on Mulberry Mountain in Arkansas, right in Ozark, Arkansas. So if you haven't got tickets yet and you're kind of on the fence about it, get out the fence and uh, come to the mountain <laughs> because they're – Although there will always be other music festivals, there will never be another Backwoods of Mulberry Mountain 2019 with this exact lineup of people. So what music are you excited about or what other things about the festival can you tell us that you're personally excited about as an attendee beyond just what you're bringing? Zed's Dead. I've been wanting to see Zed's Dead for years. That's a big one. Um, They do not disappoint. No, I, I just... I'm I'm most excited about dancing, man. I'm gonna be honest with you. I can't wait to dance and see all my old friends and we got there and cut a rug and just turn into a sweaty mess while we're kicking it. Um I'm also gonna catch probably a lot of the yoga, a lot of the yoga workshops too, because those just seem fun. And you need it while you're out there dancing and getting sweaty, getting tired and achy. The best thing to do is go get you some yoga in. So that's gonna be exciting for me too. I was talking about this with Aubrey, which you would also know her because she's coordinating these workshops. And I realized actually not only is it awesome to do yoga at a festival, it's the best time to do it. Just actually the optimal time. You're, it's how much more fun is it to do yoga with all your friends on, uh, you know, at this big party versus having to go to a studio, pay a teacher, uh, watch a video or whatever. This is the ideal right. time to do some yoga <laughs> even if you're new to it right you, you got all the homies you don't feel pressure to be able to do everything but you know it's always just enough to where everyone can have a good time totally man do you have any practices that you would point people to that you've found help you on the path of this uh, self-initiation that we're doing 
Um, meditation was a big one. Um, I can't tell you how much stuff I've worked through, um, past trauma or, you know, whatever the case might be, or just to, to have a level head. Um, meditation was a big one. Um, I pray a lot too. prayer. Prayer is a big one. Just, just to take the time to talk to that energy, you know, that created us all is always good. And then besides that, I mean, uh, just reading and studying, man. Um, uh, one of the best books I've ever bought was The Secret Teachings of All Ages by Manly P. Hall. Mm -hmm. That if, if you need an overview, if you need some insight, if you want to know where to start, I mean, you, that's a, an amazing jump off point. And it's documented by someone that actually started the um, Philosophical Society in California. So he's he's been talking to all these people for for years and years and years. He's gone now, but that's probably the best. I would start there. That is a great tome and quite comprehensive and exhaustive. It's one of it is about as thick as it gets. And that's oh, on the God. so that's on the metaphysical and sort of a cult side but if you're interested in the dark side not the perfect black but the uh the, the bad kind of darkness <laughs> of secret societies a book that i would recommend is called tragedy and hope 101 oh yeah tragedy and hope um also i own a copy of morals and dogma if you can if you can get a, a hand on the book morals and dogma i would a real copy recommend. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can typically find them in a used bookstore. You know, people's grandparents die and they don't know what they have and they turn them in. But if you can find you one, get your hand on that. Yeah, I haven't actually cracked that book, but I've I've uh, read excerpts from it. And so that's sort of like detailing quite a bit of what's going on with Freemasonry. And oh, yeah. the other thing that could uh, be a great place to study and it's definitely at your own pace and is worth looking into is astrology. I'll just throw that out there only because I'm looking at the full moon through my window right now. And we're in a full moon of Libra. And I personally, in my chart, my moon sign is a Lib in Libra. So all around feeling this moon, I think I need to go outside and dance around it. <laughs> I'm also with you though, on being most excited for dancing. So uh, that's gotta be, the most free and empowering thing you can do is uh, get with your tribe and get down. There's nothing to worry about. Oh yeah. Well, it's been, oh yeah. It's been good having you, man. I think we're gonna wrap it up and see. Well, I'd like to see what kind of closing statement you might want to make and possibly entice people to come to the festival. And if they're coming to the festival, come out to your workshop. Uh, and thanks for doing this with me as well. I'd love to talk to you again on here in a more extended form for sure. Oh uh, yeah, we we'll, we'll link up when we're at the festival. Um, I guess to to end on, I'll just say, uh, come out, have fun, be inspired, uh, love some of your uh, some learn something about yourself, be free. Um, and if you want to talk to me, you can hit me up on uh, Facebook or Instagram. I'm there. You can ask me anything you want, and yeah, just just come out and have a good time. Really cool. I'll make sure and link your Instagram on the Facebook video and. Yeah, people listening, do us a favor, subscribe to Interverse on SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes, or whatever podcast catching app that you love so that you can make sure you get the full, full-fledged episodes every week. I've got quite an interesting one coming up just in a day or two with a soul painting, Reiki energy healing, tattoo artist, really fun conversation. Can't wait to bring it to y'all. sounds fun. So... Definitely make sure you're subscribed, and if you like catching our live streams, actually live, then go ahead and give Interverse uh, a go to the page and tell it to uh, give you notifications. And if you're curious about how to do that, just ask me. I'll even help you walk you through it because you want these notifications so you can get in here and ask us some questions. And I think the reason why we didn't exactly get the traffic on the video that I expected was because I streamed it straight to the event and I haven't really tried doing that before. I thought that would actually be the way to go because there's a lot of people interested in the event, but it turns out that actually less people see that than if I just did it straight through my page. But we will re-upload this video to, uh, to uh, the page itself and to YouTube. So like I said, guys, the content will be on just about every platform that you could possibly look for a podcast on, and we'd love you to be tuning in. 
giving us your feedback, and then coming and finding us on the mountain, most of all, because we love you guys. We wouldn't be bringing this to you and this information and this media and these workshops if it wasn't because we thought we had something worth sharing with you all out of love. And thanks for being with me, Jay. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I loved it, man. I loved it. I can't wait until next time. Yes. Yeah. We're going to do a full-fledged one. Don't worry. I'll get with you and we'll schedule that. But for now, toodaloo, everybody. And thanks for being with us and take good care of yourself. And yeah, get careful. Be full of care. That That's the thing to take away from this little chat is not careful like you're afraid of stuff, but careful like you really care. You're so full of care. That will get you places. Right. All right. Talk to you later, man.